Um, now, it now gives me great um, uh, pleasure to introduce our, our next speaker, Victor Dodig. Victor is the president and CEO of CIBC. Uh, as a bank CEO, he is by definition a captain of industry, but uh, Victor is much more than that. He's actually a terrific champion and supporter of the not-for-profit world. Victor is on the board of the C.D. Howe Institute, uh, the ROM Board of Governors. He's a terrific champion for gender diversity in the workplace and chairs the 30% uh, 30 Club Canada and the Catalyst Canada Advisory Board. Um, he and his wife, Maureen, do terrific fundraising. Uh, so has supported uh, events uh, for organizations such as the Children's Aid Foundation and the Toronto Catholic Archdiocese, just to name a few. And uh, um, I think Victor is a, is a great leader. Uh, if you ever come out to CIBC events, uh, people throng to Victor uh, to get selfies with him. You actually have to line up to get a selfie with Victor. So he's, he's a tremendous uh, leader. Uh, I would say since he was appointed uh, CEO in 2014, He's really um, galvanized uh, our culture and make sure that uh, we do everything through the eyes of our clients. And I think one of the reasons that he has been so successful is that he's been able to take our, our 43,000 employees and get us to focus on a common purpose. And I believe that is the topic of his remarks. So please join me in welcoming Victor Dodig. Thanks, Steve. Good morning, everybody. And this isn't, uh, I guess they turned it off for me. Let me, first of all, thank you for inviting me today. I also wanted to throw a flower to Maria. We, we worked together in the St. Joe's Hospital campaign, the Promise campaign, where we've been making terrific progress together. I want to start off, there's always a risk, with a joke. And it's a joke about boldness and tenacity. Because as fundraising professionals, those are two characteristics that probably define you the most. With a joke, you hope it's funny. Try and laugh. You hope it's short. You hope you get to the point. So a duck walks into a bar. He hops on the bar counter, sees the bartender, and asks him, do you have any grapes? Remember, boldness and tenacity. The bartender says, I have no grapes. This is a bar. So the duck walks out. He comes back the second day. Waddles in, hops on the bar counter, and asks the bartender, do you have any grapes? He said, duck, I told you yesterday I have no grapes. I have liqueurs. I have wines, I have these beers, this is a bar, I have no grapes, go away. The duck goes away. The third day, the duck shows up again. Hops on the bar counter, looks at the bartender and asks him, do you have any grapes? The bartender got really angry, he said, look, duck, three days in a row you're asking for grapes, there are no grapes here, the next time you ask for grapes, I will nail your beak to the bar counter. The duck startled, walks out. Day four, the duck walks back into the bar, hops on the bar, tent, uh, bar counter, looks at the bartender, asks him, do you have any nails? He said, no. He goes, do you have any grapes? <laughs> <laughs> Boldness and tenacity. That's what define the fundraising professionals of our great country. Um, but I'm here to talk to you about teams. And I'm here to talk to you about how engaging a team with a shared sense of purpose and a common vision can really set apart great organizations from average organizations. And rather than start with banking examples, I thought I'd start with life examples of where that holds true and where that unified vision of a team engaged in a common sense of purpose can make a real difference. You all, require, you all recall March of the Penguins? How many of you have seen March of the Penguins? We got a picture up there? All right. So March of the Penguins. Do you remember that when the female penguin gave birth to an egg, she had to hand it off to the male? make sure the egg could hatch. Do you remember that to graze those penguins, that family of chicks, the penguins, all had to congregate around them to keep them warm? That's an example of a team with a shared sense of purpose. We use the penguin because Percy the penguin is one of our spokespeople. <laughs> Do you remember the Canadian Olympic hockey team last year, uh, last Olympics, the women's team? Do you remember that we were down with minutes to go? Do you remember that we won the gold medal in overtime? Do you remember how deep they dug in together as a team to win that gold medal? They won again this morning, 4-1 against Finland. That's an example of a team with a shared sense of purpose. And then we walk into space, another example. Before I get into banking, because you think banking can be boring, but I'm going to make it exciting for you. This person is in space on their own. 
Chris Hadfield on his own. But if you've ever heard Chris Hadfield speak, he would remind you that he can't do this without the benefit of the space station team, without the benefit of the people on the ground. Anything that's great in life that requires um, an objective that needs to be achieved and overcome, a challenge that needs to be overcome, is really all about a team, an empowered team with a shared sense of purpose. You know, Steve invited me, uh, introduced me as the captain of the CIBC team. I can assure you that me, on my own day to day, with the little decisions that I make, have no bearing and no impact on our clients, on our community, and to our shareholders without the great work of our team. And that holds true for each of these three examples. The culture of an organization, that team spirit, is more defining and more powerful than a strategy. You know, Peter Drucker, the great management theorist, said that strategy, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And it's true. You can have grand strategies, but if you don't have an engaged team with a shared sense of purpose, you really go nowhere. And as I took on the leadership role of CIBC three and a half years ago, with our 40, it's actually 44,500 team members, I just looked at the last quarterly. Um, <laughs> it's a very strong team because we added our Chicago team, right? Um, it's a very strong team. And we looked at what we're trying to build because we were a bank that came out of the financial crisis wounded. We turned in, we got defensive. And we said, how do we pull this all together? And we agreed that the thing that we needed to do was become that relationship-focused bank for the modern world. We recognized that technology is changing the world, but we recognized that we needed to get focused on our clients and re-engage with our clients and build that culture within our bank. So how did we do that? How do we get reconnected with our clients? We did some unorthodox things. We took executives from the trading floor on Bay Street and said to them, once a quarter, you have to visit one of our banking centers. You're going to adopt a banking center. That banking center is going to be yours so that you're connected with the banking center leader, with the tellers, with the financial advisors, and with our clients, with our Canadian clients that are dealing with the challenges and issues that they have each and every day to take you out of the bubble of the trading floor. We decided to put power into the hands of our employees through a program called Make It Right, where if you were not in the office and you were socializing with your friends, as we often do out of office hours and on the weekends, and you heard a problem, we gave you the power to fix that problem with your friend or with your acquaintance and fix it within 24 hours. That is an example of an engaged team. We then decided to move our headquarters from King and Bay. So for those of you who love the Leafs like I do, you'll notice that there's a big construction project going on across the street. It's called CIBC Square. We decided to do the unorthodox thing and move off of King and Bay and engage in the largest construction, commercial construction project in the country, one of the largest on the continent, to transform our bank. And many would say, well, that's great. You're transforming the bank. You're kind of moving down Bay Street. No big deal. Try and move 15,000 people out of 23 different locations in the city of Toronto. And how do you do that? How do you create the culture that you want to create? How do you engage the technology that you want to have there? How do you make sure that the disabled that work in our, in our team have a voice as to how they want access to the building? Well, we gave that leadership job to Venny, and she's got an entire team around her to help us transform CIBC's new headquarters into the headquarters of the future. We're building an urban park. We don't have a picture of it up here. We should have put that up there as well. We're building an urban park over the train tracks as well to connect two large buildings. It will be the future, but it's just a building. But within this building is this culture of caring and this culture of a team. And I use that culture of caring term because that's who we are as well. People look at the Canadian banks, people look at a CIBC and say, you're just one big bank who's always out for yourself. That's categorically false. We put our clients first, we think about our shareholders, and we give back to our community. We take great pride in the fact that last year, we gave back $65 million, employees and our bank and our shareholders to the community. We are really, really big in the United Way. 
But there's two things I want to talk to you about where our team gets engaged and feels a passion around a shared sense of purpose that goes beyond banking, that relates very much to what you do. In 1992, a few people on the West Coast in Victoria, a few members of our team, were rallying around one of our colleagues who had breast cancer and said, we need to do something here. We need to raise some money for a cure. And a few of them got together and raised $85,000. You fast forward to 2018, 21 years later, and the CIBC run for the cure has colored the month of October pink across our country. With a passion of 15,000 people inside our bank and outside our bank run for the cure because they have somebody that they care about. They have a common sense of purpose and they really want to raise money to solve cancer. It used to be just for breast cancer. This most recent year, it's about cancer overall. We've raised over $400 million as a team, as a community. In our banking centers, we sell decks of cards that are pink. We sell scarves that are pink. And everyone rallies around the cause. And we have this common sense of purpose. It's emotional. If you ever have a relative run that's a survivor, they cry. And it gives you that galvanizing sense of what we're all about as a bank, what we're all about as an institution, and what we're all about as a pillar of our society. Another example in December. The first Wednesday of December, since the mid-80s, we started something called Miracle Day. In one small Wood Gundy branch known as 42nd Street, in, in the heart of the financial district, there was a, a gentleman by the name of Tim Miller, the late Tim Miller, who loved the holidays. He loved Christmas and the holiday season. And he said, you know what, we've got to give back to our community. We got to rally around together as a team. And he got all the advisors in the office to give their commissions and their revenues from that one day to create a miracle for kids. And that same day, that first day, there was $192,000. You fast forward to 30 years later, and on the first Wednesday of December, you come to any of our trading floors in Toronto and Chicago and New York and London and Hong Kong. We raised over $5 million this past December. We've raised well over $200 million for kids' charities since this has started. A common sense of purpose that goes beyond simply business and money. But how do you convert that as a team and get engaged to give back to the community? On that first Wednesday, we have rock stars, we have athletes, we have movie stars come into the trading floor to take orders from our clients. Our clients recognize it's Miracle Day, and they do even more business through us, and everything goes to kids' charities. We then have a board that works toward making sure those monies get well distributed throughout the countries that we operate in to help kids. And as I said to you at the very beginning, that, that notion of an engaged team with a common sense of purpose is really the defining factor in terms of what makes a average organization, a great organization. It's had a profound impact on the transformation of our bank under the current leadership team. We have a future that we look forward to in a very big way, but it's all because of that engaged team, that shared sense of purpose. It is a big difference. And remember what I said to you, culture eats strategy every day of the year, every morning of the year. All right? so. Let me just wrap up here with a video from Miracle Day. If you don't feel good about this, this is all about the heroes on the trading floor who benefit from the team's generosity and engagement to make sure that we can make life better for kids too. So why don't we run that video? I just want to remind you that everything you contribute makes a difference. There are lots of obstacles, but these challenges can either block our path or they can become the stepping stones to our success. It's days like Miracle Day that make a difference. It's really important not only to myself, but to the parents and to the traders that we can do something, that we can make a difference.
everybody feels good about Miracle Day. So I told you at the beginning, continue to be bold and tenacious like the duck, to continue to engage your teams and give them that shared sense of purpose because it'll help you all rise up. And let me just close by thanking all of you who are our clients because we wouldn't be able to do what we do as a bank without our clients. So thank you very much.